Hey, what's going on YouTube? So, uh, first things first, I got my new shirts in, which are pretty cool, so I'm just liking it. Um, which is awesome, thank you Teespring for that. Uh, some of the updates we got, so I got a couple of sensors here, that's not what's important. What's important is this box here, which contains my brand new standalone ECU, uh, or at least all the parts to put it all together. So, um, I guess we'll just go ahead and say uh, what's in the box. Duino is the company that I've got the standalone ECU from. Now this is very similar to a Megasquirt ECU. Uh, the Megasquirt does have a little bit more capabilities and features, but since we're running such an old engine, a lot of those features don't really give us so much benefit. So this kit is really in the ballpark about $150 to $200 for everything that you need to uh, wire everything up, but the catch is to be as cheap as possible you've got to build it yourself and of course since we're initial DIY mods why not build it ourselves um, another capacitor uh, we got some jumpers that's usually going to be how you configure for some of these Arduino based electronics uh, the screw terminal block this is going to be for our power and ground to turn on the ECU uh, more resistors no, are these in inductors? Don't know. I wasn't an electronical engineer, so I have no idea. Uh, crap, what are these things called? More resistors, holy crap. Uh, look, microprocessor, microcomputer, microprocessor. Uh, oh, this is the map sensor. So this is a, supposed to be a 2.5 bar map sensor does not say what it is on here, but it's got a boost nipple. But um, yeah, this will basically, we'll plug a boost reference into our ECU directly, uh, and it'll reference that, which is pretty good. It's not like referencing a gauge, converting it to electronic, and then transferring it by wiring. It's going straight to the ECU, which is cool. Uh, microprocessor pin board. Uh, mail pins, probably cut those down. Here is the board. Uh, we're going to solder on all of our connections onto here. And that's going to control everything, which is cool. And then looks like we've got a couple more of these thingies, which I still don't remember what the name is. God, there was something. I feel like I remember this from school, but I'm, I'm, I just can't. And last but not least, we have a really cool case here. Now, the case was a little bit extra, but I figured... You know, I think it was like 20 something dollars extra or whatever, but instead of having this thing sitting out exposed in the car, better to put it all in a case, keep it nice and clean looking, and make it a lot easier to detach and remove if I need to do any sort of modifications to the car or swap the engine or anything like that. So um, definitely a little handy, not bad for an extra $25, $30. So that's everything that comes with the ECU. It looks like here they have all the numbers uh, printed out. So you've got like R31, R32, R33, R34, <laughs> R34, uh, R6. So everything seems to be unique. Actually, maybe that's what all these are. So I guess these resistors are for R9, R12, R15, and R18. And we just go in here and we find uh, R9. Where's R9? It's like a really shitty puzzle. Oh, so there's R9, for example, right up there. So we could uh, plug into that, and it seems like everything's super well sorted in that case, and really I don't even have to, I don't need instructions, everything's written on the board. So holy crap, this might be super, super easy. So this is all Arduino based, Arduino, Ar Arduino based, ECU. In order to make it easier, since my car is 25 years old and I have no idea the history, a lot of the motor. I don't really know what the motor, if that's the original motor, or if it's a swapped motor, or whatever. Um, I think it might be swapped. Who knows? But we had to get some sensors. So this is the first sensor that's arrived. This is our oil temp. So we went with the GM style. So this is AC Delco. Um, all the sensors we're going to use are going to be from GM. So that way they're super universal. 
They're easily swappable between them. So if this sensor burns out, I can just go buy another sensor from GM for like 10 bucks and uh, throw it in. I don't have to find special fittings, special connectors, uh, or try and find a replacement for the original uh, Mitsubishi part that may be discontinued now that it's been 26, 27 years uh, since that car came out. So just keeping it simple. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, once again, check out the website. The website is initialdiymods.com. Uh, we also have a shop, so go there. You can click on the links and the info cards here uh, or in the description. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the video. Let me know what you guys think about this ECU. Have any of you worked with it? Uh, go ahead and write in the comments below. It's my first time doing a full standalone ECU, uh, so it's going to be a learning experience for me, and hopefully I can relay some, some special tips for you guys too. And of course, uh, give it a like, give it a share. That'd be really appreciated. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, because we're going to be doing a lot of cool stuff, not only with the Mini Cooper, uh, but we're also doing custom welded uh, DIY headers for the Genesis Coupe. Um, we've got a lot of other stuff coming up too. So uh, definitely a lot of big projects. So once again, thank you guys, and check all that stuff out. All right, peace. Going back to work. But that's everything. All right. I'm going to go back to not working on cars. Right, honey? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs>